Speaking of pilgrimage, <laughs> Tyler's here. Got it. <laughs> uh, I like that. What's in the mug, by the way? Um, straight like breakfast roast coffee this morning. Okay, and what is said mug? Are you are you uh, P.S. You are P.I.M.P. I, I am. I am. Yep. I don't, know, I don't know if I would call this the pimp cup, <laughs> but no, but no, it's what you are promoting, sir. Yes, it is, it is a straight up promotion for the scarves in Spikes mug that you can uh, get at their location and their store and all of their social media that have the the links that you can click to and click through, so you can or wear you them. Can, and you can go watch them before the game. That is yeah. yes, yes, that is true. Uh, go ahead and get the plug uh, going. There. Great, y'all are doing all the promos for me this morning. We'll, we'll dial it up early because we got <laughs> other stuff to talk. We got all the stuff to talk about. We'll get the promos out of the way. So uh, right. you and uh, the cast of thousands are at the the Hotel Signia across the uh, Home Depot backyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be there uh, kicking it off at five thirty up at the Nest on Four Bar, and uh, I'll probably be drinking a mojito as as we wow. do. Um, mojitos are good there. So go get you one. And uh, they have really good steak frites. So I'll throw that out there, too. I had that last time. It was oh. really good. Um, yeah, so we'll be there at 530. We, we now know that at least Messi will travel. So yes. yay, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah, y'all come hang out with us. It'll be a good time. We'll, we'll go for about an hour. So plenty of time for everybody to get over to the bins and get in your seat. And then watch John also up on the the Halo board as yeah, well. And then 30-foot head. Yeah. But uh, and then one other thing too, uh, Monday we are starting kind of an MLS Monday type show. It, it'll be added on to what we normally do with Atlanta United on Monday. But we're going to be bringing on some like some some different um, podcasters and folks from just around the the league talking about whatever happens the weekend before the weekend prior. So that'll be that'll be kind of kicking off a little bit more on Monday as well. So, so. I so he buries the league. Program expansion at Scarves and Spikes. I see, I see, I see you working. I see, I see you, I see you working. I mean, come on now. You buried the lead. You're expanding your programming grid. Come on now, man. Yeah. It's been a busy two and a half minutes since I've been on the show. Yeah. I, don't know. I mean, yeah, so let's let's see how you can let's see how you can keep up with uh, fifth gear, just basically slamming the car into fifth gear as we get on here. Because I mean, because yeah, that exactly. <laughs> well, sir. I, I will go. Yeah, I'll go like that, uh, since, since I've never been a fan of the the brown flavored water. But uh, let me. Are the gods? Uh, as you, uh, that's that's on your particular perspective, sir. Uh, I, I will I will go with the Pepsi product that uh, that has been all over the place, and, and keeping people awake allegedly. Uh, Are you doing like the uh, what was it the the Coke Zero Oreo flavor thing too? Oh, good Lord. No. I, well, first and foremost, that would be a Mike Conti question because he is the Coke Zero aficionado. Uh, I, to be legit, to be honest, I can't remember the last time that I crossed the streams and went from the P product to the C product. I really don't. I, I just, I cannot that's remember. very weird for somebody who was born in radio, <clears throat> I went to school here. Yeah. No, that's just wrong. Hey. It's it's uh it's more it's more sugar and uh you know it's uh that's less it's less bite. Look, they lost me when they went to New Coke and said it was uh New Coke when actually it was sugar versus a sucrose fructose remix. And they, they were a bunch of fibbing fibbers to me. Wasn't and that like forty years ago? True. And that's that shows you how old I am. <laughs> so yeah, they, they lost me then and they have not gotten me back. But um when it comes to the the thought pattern of the folks that hang out with that with you, whether it is you, comma Sid, comma Tommy, colon uh, guests, and those that uh, drift into your Twitch pitch, what has been the feedback that you've been getting since the Nashville clunker leading into Messi and friends? What have what have been the the prevailing thoughts of the folks that have been hanging out with you on the night side? after us on the day side mainly that atlanta didn't deserve to win and they kind of don't deserve to make the playoffs at this point not not that they're not you know hoping for it regardless but it's one of those things where you go and you put out a performance like you did on saturday 
And you know, we all saw how Rob was after the after the match. He was drop, drop it, dropping an f bomb in the post game. I'm happy, uh, but I think it pretty well reflected the fan base. So I mean, there's still you know it, it sucks because there's that apathy. That apathy's been there for I think really since the summer transfer window, uh, maybe since the Santos Laguna game. And oh uh, look, it's time to get on the soccer down here. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> At nine night, your 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 phone is four <laughs> minutes late. It was on snooze, so I had that's the the second time it snoozed. Um, so look, I was actually early. Thank that's what you. I'm saying. You were early. You were early, and your phone was four minutes late. <laughs> yeah, that's well. That's where my life is at right now. Okay. All right. Uh, no, but yeah, it was it, it was very much a sense of apathy and like just. It's just frustration. I mean, you know, we, we have people coming into our, our version of the Twitch pitch and they're, you know, they're like, man, what are we going to do in the off season? That's where everybody's at. They just want to get to the off season. They want to get to what changes are going to be made to this organization that are going to make it better because nobody's necessarily coming out specifically in saying it, except for maybe Sydney. <laughs> Sydney kind of kind of hinted at it the other day, but he said, you know, it feels it feels like the team kind of phoned it in and we know they don't go out there and just uh, not put forth effort. You know, I I think anybody that says that is, is absolutely wrong, but you can go out there and, and try to drive a square peg on a round hole all you want to, like they did against Nashville. And it, it does kind of look like you're not trying. And so uh, Saturday was just one of those days. It was, it was a really frustrating one. You, you had everything going for you, and then you came out 10 minutes, came out flat. Brad Gazan had to save you in the first three minutes, and then he couldn't save you in the first five minutes. So that just set the tone for the night, unfortunately. Jarrett with Tyler on his weekly Wednesday visit. So what do you consider to be the proper or, or an acceptable reaction to tonight? Or for tonight, I should say. For tonight? You know, I mean – if if Atlanta were to go out there and win tonight, obviously you're going to celebrate it, obviously. But you kind of put yourself back where you started because, you know, you beat Charlotte, and I think a draw in that game would have been cool. But you beat Charlotte, had a two-week break. Then you go up against Nashville, who just was an awful run of form at home, and you don't do anything. And so, you know, that could have been the beginning of a of – a, two game streak right and you you don't handle business so then if you do somehow win against Miami tonight you're kind of back where you where you started but then you have to go on the road it doesn't get easier from here you 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 find a way to fiddle around and screw up your games that you probably should win and then somehow you go and beat Miami and Fort Lauderdale you know or Columbus here at home like you just have this this weird way of going about, you know, playing to the level of your opponent. And so, yeah, there is a chance that my or Atlanta could come out tonight and play Miami to another 5-2 game because they just have that weird way of playing up or down to the level. But, I mean, for what I, I, what I said on the show, on our show, was a 2-2 draw. Two for Atlanta because they're kind of playing for a little bit of pride and for Rob Valentino to not scream at them again. And Miami, too, because it's Miami, and they're going to score two goals at least with Messi there, I imagine. One of the things that I wanted to discuss with everybody yesterday was what you were discussing on the night side. The idea of, well, don't deserve to be in the playoffs, et cetera, et cetera. And there are, there are fans that will either watch either one of our programs or watch both. We encourage that you watch both because mm-hmm. your, your experience becomes immersive at that point. It, it is nonstop. That if you don't deserve to be in the playoffs, go ahead, play the kids, go you know all, all, the, all the touchstones. Play the kids. I don't want to be in the playoffs, those kinds of things. And, and I wanted to know yesterday, and I'll go ahead and reposit the question today because you know viewership and listenership is different. I wanted to know where that mindset came from of not wanting to go into a postseason. Because for me, as someone who is a Los Angeles Kings fan, you know, tried and true, heart, hand over the heart, other hand in the air, 2012 Stanley Cup playoffs, you go in as an eight seed, 
you smash folks, you get a goalie who's on a heater of all heaters, you win the whole thing. So I have never been one to hold back when it comes to a team and sit there and go, no, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go into a postseason. The draft is not something that is readily going to help you if you are there in the in-betweens, right there on the edges. You, you know, the the 13-14 selection may not necessarily help you in the immediate. So why not go ahead, dive into the deep end of the pool, make the playoffs, treat it like a college football bowl game where you get those extra practices, where you get those extra reps, you get that extra activity, and you get to give yourself more of a knowledge base if you're the front office and sit there and say, okay, so-and-so is really throwing themselves into it. So-and-so is, so-and-so is, so-and-so is. And that way you get more, more empirical evidence that can help you going forward. Were you getting that same kind of feedback when it came to, well, I don't want to go in because X, Y, Z, you know, just whatever. Were you getting those same kinds of yin and yang when it came to, to coming in? Yeah, I want more. I want more practices. I want to see folks or just like, nope, don't worry about it. Was it one extreme or the other? Yeah, it's it's definitely like one. It's, it's there's a line and there's nobody on the line. Everybody's on one side of it. And I think. You know, right now, again, the apathy has crept in, which I, I hate that I, it sucks, but I also completely understand it. And that's where and being in the middle and having apathy is worse than the other extremes. You either you either want very good or very bad. The yeah. Middle lukewarm and, sucks. Yeah, you, yeah, lukewarm. You're just kind of like, eh, because it doesn't help you with a soda, doesn't help you with coffee, doesn't help you with uh, your favorite drink or your favorite food. It's just there. Terrible bath water. Yeah, all of it. It's just yeah. terrible. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the the one side of it playing to try to get into the playoffs, and I still contend <laughs> all and always will because of what you said. You don't get anything for sucking. You really don't. So go make it into the playoffs in the version that MLS has this year because we don't know what it could be next year. Go get in because you can, Mm -hmm. and then just see what happens. See what happens. Give your fans something to to fight for, something to be excited about. I mean, you haven't shown them a lot because you've been so flip-floppy. But it's anybody's game once you get into the playoffs. The other side is – I think why so many folks are just like, man, let's look to 2025. And that's not to say they've given up entirely, but I think people are just ready for the page to to turn. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes from, there are so many changes in this organization right now from, from the team all the way up that I think people are looking at the end of the season as, well, whatever we do then anyway, isn't going to matter much in the grand scheme of things because half the squad and probably a new head coach and a new, you know, technical director are all going to be in place maybe and designated players going into 2025. So in the next, you know, five months, you could have a ton of new faces. So, you know, this, this squad could go out there and maybe make a little run into the playoffs, but then what? Then, you, then it, most of them are going to end up getting, you know, shuffled around. You know, you'll keep some. Maybe some are going to be on the way out. You're going to bring in new guys. And so that extra little bit doesn't really do much for the chemistry overall of the team going into preseason of next year. Not saying that's right or wrong, but I think that's kind of where the the people that I've talked to, that's their mindset. Jarrett with Tyler here on Wall Pass Wednesday. Go for it. Yeah, and, you know, looking at, you know, we – can talk about all the changes that might come, but we can get really deep into this in the postseason or in the offseason, excuse me, when we uh, when we really dig our hands down into the clay of change. Uh, but let's talk about tonight because you don't have Shonday Silva, who Rob touched on that he's been dealing with a foot injury. Um, and honestly, makes a lot of sense for a lot of Shonday as I kind of gesture towards everything for 2024 if it's kind of been a general injury. But what are you doing tonight if you're lining this up knowing you don't have him? I think, I mean, obviously Tyler Wolf and Edwin Mosquera are two of the main choices, but I would love to see Luke Brennan get some time. I would love to see Luke Brennan get some time. And, I, and you know, if you saw me the other night on our show, I was very much, and that was the other thing that you asked earlier that I didn't say, play the kids. Like, play the kids because they're hungry, they're going to want it. And this past game kind of felt like one of those games where 
and and Rob kind of implied like the team just didn't want it. And that's a motivational thing. That's something that they've got to figure out. And not saying that that's necessarily true. I don't think you can be a professional in this organization and not want to go win, but it sure looked like it. Yeah. So put out the players that you know are going to give you 110% every time. And that is the Luke Brennan's. I will say that Edwin Mosqueras because he doesn't get a lot of playing time and he he's hungry as well. Um, you know, the, all the guys that we've seen, the Efrains and Noah Cobbs, all the, the young guys that are coming up that have had phenomenal years in the short time that they've played, give them an opportunity. Now, p- being practical, I think you're going to see Edwin Mosquera start. And I would like to see the the mischievousness, mis- mischief. What's the word? Just, just, just mischief. Yeah, the mischief of Luke Brennan. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to see that um, because I, I just think with with Miami's back line, with their defense, with the potential friend of ours that he might be going up against on that side if he does play on the left, um, I, th- I just think his play style is going to fit getting around and getting in behind. Um, add in the the you know the 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 fact that you don't have you know the one of the world's best midfielders, even though he hasn't been great against Atlanta. I just think it fits a Luke Brennan kind of guy. So that's what I would like to see. 60th, 65th minute, you know, bring in fresh legs and, and let it be Luke. So run like hell at the left-hand side, have him go chasing shadows, and then when you hit 60th minute, tag out and have him continue to chase shadows for another 30 minutes. Yeah, except these shadows do a lot of dribbly stuff and go sideways and, and then vertical. <laughs> a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of dribbly stuff. Yeah, that that's uh, that, and that is the official soccer term. It is a lot. Yes, of it is. Uh, no Avalos, no Busquets, because of red card accumulation, and then you wonder. And like, and we talked about it uh, earlier in the week. A lot of the folks that are making this trip as a part of the three matches in eight days for Messi and friends played eighty or north of eighty against Philadelphia. So you wonder about availability tonight. How many minutes? Is it a cameo? Do they run out? Those kinds of things. I, and this is where I think the 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 palace intrigue sets in. Yes, I know it's supposed to be a full house tonight at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, but how much rotation does Tata Martino put out there considering all the minutes that the, the starting 11 had against Philadelphia in a win there where you've got to win against you got to win against Philly. You're chasing after the number four team in the Eastern Conference on the weekend. You're ten points clear. You have a little breathing room. I just I legitimately wonder what it's going to look like for uh, for Messi and friends tonight, just because of all of these different factors that we talk about. All the minutes played on the weekend, dudes that are missing, and playing NYC on the weekend, and the irony of Marcelo Claure. So uh, th- there's a whole lot of stuff that's in play here for me, and I will be interested to see what Tata does tonight with that lineup of his. Yeah. Uh, I think look, if you, if you watched me the other night, you would know that I was quite irritated <laughs> um, oh. I'm talking about the Nashville game. And, and I did say, yeah, like I think you kind of hope that that Messi shows up simply because of the fact that uh, the apathy for Atlanta has set in all the things that we've talked about have set in. And so, you know, you're you're opening the stadium up on a Wednesday anyway. Mm-hmm. MLS is this was not Atlanta's decision necessarily. Yeah, um, it's a Wednesday game, right? It, it it the the crowds. Not that they've been bad. I know people are talking about like, you know, the crowd size and all that. Absolutely, it has diminished. I'm not at all trying to deny that. Still, one of the best crowds you're you're going to see in MLS. Period. So, that being said, it's not forty five thousand. It's not seventy thousand. I think it'll be good for for folks to just go into a Mercedes-Benz Stadium again that is relatively full. I think, you know, whatever happens, happens. I think the fan, the Atlanta fans know the kind of up and down nature of this team. So the fact that Messi is at least making the trip, I think, is good just for the overall day. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know that it's going to be good for the health of Atlanta United. But I also don't think that he plays much, if at all. I think he will play. Now that I know he's coming, because I don't know why in the world he would make the trip if he wasn't going to at least see the pitch for a few minutes. Um, 
no way he plays 90. I doubt he plays even 45 because that would be a dumb coaching decision by Tata Martino. It, it really would. I mean, you played him 90 this past weekend. You're on a three-day or a three-game kind of run just like Atlanta is. But you are in the top of the standings, and you can afford to play anybody else because anybody else has still gotten you points. It's not like, you know, a lot of other teams that – as soon as you take that prime starting 11 off the pitch and then things start to drop, Miami has gotten points this year when not playing, you know, Messi and all of his buddies, or at least most of them. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think Messi will get a, a cameo appearance. Um, Everybody else, Suarez, I think, unless any news has popped up that I've missed, um, I would imagine Suarez would at least play a half. I imagine we'll see a lot of Campana. Um, and then, and then everybody else will just kind of be mixed in and matched as, as they can, but lots of rotation. Absolutely. I just don't think you're going to see, you know, the quote unquote stars for a significant amount of time. Um, the injury report listed is out for Atlanta. Shonday out, Ronald Hernandez out. A and the other part of this is what happened late in the match against Nashville involving Pedro Amador v. Sam Surridge. And you're hoping that Pedro uh, Amador is okay, considering the contact that was made and him hitting the turf pretty badly. Uh, did you see him in I the mean, locker room? No, I did not. It was rough. It was yeah. bad. He, yeah. he genuinely looked like he got in a fight and got punched. It was, uh, you know, the the kind of – bruising bloody kind of knot right here and then starting to black out over how in the world uh he didn't end up with an actual concussion is beyond me but he got he got thwacked well the the other element in this and it's something that you and i have not had the chance to talk about and uh i'm sure that it was talked about on your show and on and on ours is that after that happened that after the contact was made with Surridge, that no one, short of Brad, yep, went up to the man in the middle and tried to have a discussion, and Sam Surridge is grabbing his head when there was no real contact with that part of his body. And I'm, you know, and I understand not wanting to draw a cheap card and all those kinds of things, but I think there is a line that can be walked in that situation where – Pedro Amador is your teammate. This happens to him. Sam Surridge cleans him out and literally comes in from behind. And like I said, I'm left-handed. Surridge did it with his right. So think of this as in a mirror. Sam Surridge comes in, clear, cleans out Amador from behind. And all you have is Brad discussing things with the referee. And disappointingly, that wasn't even taken to VAR for review about any kind of contact or any kind of card period. It was just like, yeah, okay, whatever, Surge grabs his head and he walks off after a while. That was something that I wish had taken a different amplitude after that happened to a teammate of, of uh, folks with Atlanta United on Saturday night. Yeah, you know, the VAR thing honestly doesn't bother me only because Atlanta didn't deserve to even kind of come close to winning that game the way that they played. Like you go back to the VAR decision earlier in the game and I mean, it was close. It was the right call ultimately. Right. But Atlanta was just not doing themselves any favors. And then you have that moment happen with Pedro Amador. And it's like, what, what, like, where's the fight? Where's the, where's the backup for your brand new teammate? Mm -hmm. And Tommy kind of went off on a rant on this on our show the other night. And, and, but I agree, like, it's one of those things that stood out to me because, you know, I was on here, what was it Friday? And all of us were on here and Jason mentioned um, kind of the level headedness of this team, which me and him have talked about. We've talked about it on here. Like, and I, and I think it's great because the team never goes up or down. They never go beyond, they never go to the valleys or the peaks with their emotions. Mm -hmm. Anytime they lose a game, it's, um, well, we're, we're looking forward to the next one. Yeah, it does one game. Self off, go to the next, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's just kind of the overall vibe of the team the whole year. And 90% of the time, 80% of the time, whatever, that's where you have to be. But at some point, somebody needs to start 
losing their mind. And it doesn't need to be Brad and it doesn't need to be Rob Valentino. You need somebody out there that, you know, I, I go back to the Copa America match with the U S um, and that whole issue with cleaning out, you know, um, goalkeeper and then, you know, slugging people five minutes later and getting a red card. It's, it's just, there is a, there is a strategy to the dark arts. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That is a game within the game. Ask I, Torres about it. Yeah, exactly. But like, you know, you have a you have a player do that to you in your house, mm -hmm. in your beating you in your house mm -hmm. to one of your new your new players that just came here in the summer. And you left this guy out alone. Not a single Atlanta United player came up and got in anybody's face. And I understand, like you said, the not wanting to get a you know stupid yellow. Understand that. So like. Some things are, you know, again, it's strategy. Some things are bigger than that. You have to go up. You have to start a little dust up, if you will. I mean, I mean if you will. I mean, you know, go to go to the 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 six pack of water bottles. The surge is getting getting treatment. Go go to the six pack of water bottles that the Nashville Physios brought out. Sit there, grab the water bottle, take a bit of a swig, kind of look over, and, and make sure that the, those of us that are proficient in, in you know, the, our, get our masters in lip reading for television, yeah, that we can't sit there and understand what you're saying. But you know, peer over the edge and kind of sit there and and remind somebody that uh, you know uh, we'll, we'll remember that. And then, you know, Eli's coming. So just it can be something that simple, but that wasn't even there. No, and yeah, it doesn't have to be necessarily you running up and Goldberg spearing Sam Surridge. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people would have liked to have seen that. I'm sure Pedro yeah. Amador would have loved that. But yeah. um, no, you, you just something needs to be said and, and it needs to come from a few people like put somebody on notice. Like the day was done at that point, really, if we're being honest, like the day was over. Um, Nashville had, had pretty much done the job or were well on their way to doing the job. Pride, you know, pride. It, it, it's it's your teammate. Um, yeah. I, I, I wasn't looking for Red Wings and Avalanche. I, right. I, was, I was not looking for that. I was not right. looking for Claude Lemieux and Chris Draper and then Darren McCarty waiting 371 days before, you know, finding Claude Lemieux. I'm not looking for that. I am looking for that kind of a memory going forward, but I'm not looking for the Darren McCarty kind of event where he forces, you know, Claude Lemieux to turtle and, and he goes off and, and goes back into the locker room. I'm not looking for that. I'm just looking for, hey, you know, we'll remember that going forward. That That's what I'm hunting for here. Yeah. Uh, it's something other than the Atlanta United players just kind of wandering around the pitch, you know, grabbing water and then walking off. Like, that's not what you want. That's not what you want to see. That's not what Pedro Amador wants to see. And I'm sure that's not what Rob Valentino wants to see. Uh, it, that can't be the response it can't be the response. It's not, it's not acceptable. Like if I was Pedro Amador and that happened to me, the moment I got back to the locker room, I would be irate with my teammates. Like where are we all at, man? Yeah. Where were you, where was the, where was the backup? Like, cause it's going to happen. Like Sam Surge didn't do anything that every soccer player hasn't done at some point in their career. Like it's just part of it. He just came in, you know, little D baggy. <laughs> and, and gave it a little, little bit of an extra shove. Yeah. It happens. The response is what you need. And that response was everything about it was wrong, except for Brad. But it shouldn't come from Brad, even though he's the captain. Yes. He should be in the ref's ear while the rest of the team is starting a dust up. <laughs> With what we know about who's not going to be around, you mentioned the front. On a quick turn, having to also think about Red Bulls on the weekend, what are you looking for in the midfield? What are you looking for at the back? We were discussing last time out against Messi and friends. It was a 3-5-2, 5-3-2-ish kind of a thing where you drop back to five defensively. Are you starting in a uh, – are you – but, you know, are you, you know, bringing the 4-3-3, three, three, having somebody like Dax be a de facto center back, drifting him back as a part of the discussion? What are you anticipating here with, uh, with the midfield and the back line challenging this group as they are here on their way to New York City? I would, I would like to see Dax start. <clears throat> Excuse me. I would like to see Dax start. Get, get, get your liquid. You got to make sure. You yeah. Have. Um, 
I just think you, you're going to need a little bit more solidity in that midfield, and you, they don't have Busquets. And again, caveat here is Busquets has been terrible every time he's played Atlanta. Hey. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But um, you need to start off and not allow Miami to just open you up early. So you, I think you need the veteran aspect of having Dax. Steon took a cut to the cheek, but he's he's okay. Um, Derek is is okay. Of course, you have Luisa Brom, who you might have to rely on at some point, whether you come out in a, a you know back three, or just for the sheer fact that Pedro Amador literally has like a goose egg on his on his yeah. what left eye, I think. Yeah. So um, it, so you'd have the possibility of keeping an eye out for Luis at the left. Uh, Derek, Steon, Brooks, yep. Dak, Dak is, Dax is your six drifting back in to be a third center back. Yep. And then, um, you know, this, this Jay fortune, Tristan Miyumba thing has me intrigued. And the fact that, that Jay has more or less usurped Tristan Miyumba hey. is interesting. I mean, um, but he I deserves mean, it. Yeah. I mean, I mean. I would like to see him come out and start again, you know, because everybody had a bad game on Saturday. This You can't pick out one person. Um, I know everybody's kind of focused on Brooks Lennon from Saturday. He put in a bunch of bad crosses, but it wasn't just him. It was everybody. I want to see Jay get another start. Um, he's also your lone goal scorer since the summer transfer window. <laughs> so um, he's also, you know, much more attack oriented and he's had – some pretty good times against Miami in the past, like the games that he's played against them. He's, he's done well. So, um, and then, you know, of course you got to have Alexi and on the left, I think practicality, you're going to see Edwin Mosquera start. And then I think Daniel Rios up top again. And then of course Saba over on the right. I kind of think that's how it plays out. So then you're anticipating say Edwin Tyler, Saba, Luke, uh, Daniel Jamal in some combinations because you have to think about tonight and you have to think about uh, Harrison, New Jersey on the weekend. Yeah, I think the one wild card for this kind of three game stretch would be Mirinchuk because you don't know what he is capable of in terms of fitness overall. Like, you know, most number 10s around the world and in Atlanta's history have been smaller, you know, smaller guys that they can run for days. Tiago Amato would never come off the pitch. No. Uh, that's just no. how it was. No. I don't know that Alexi Marinchuk is the same. So do you see, depending on the way the game is going, him come off, even if it's just 20 minutes early, and then you have to kind of do something strange there, maybe move Jay up and bring well, in Miyamba, whatever. Well, and what we've seen with Bart is there have been times yeah. where Bart has been engaged and Bart, is moved forward as the attacking midfielder yep. and it turns into a four, one, four, one, and you catch your opponent a bit off guard because they haven't really seen Atlanta in an attacking four, one, four, one at times. And especially with Bart being the one going forward. So, you know, it's this, this, this dance that you're trying to figure out because one of who's in town two where you've got to be on the weekend and three, okay, so who's healthy, who's got minutes, what can the physios tell me about who's going to be doing what, where, and when. So uh, th this is where this is where coaches really do, and physios, they really do earn the, the daily wage because of having to think about not just this one, but the one coming up on the weekend. Yeah, and it's, again, it's the chess game. <clears throat> it's the dance, right? Because you, you look at the way, if, if everything goes the way I thought it would, and what I said earlier with, Messi maybe making a cameo at the end of the game. And you you don't want Dax to play 90 minutes. So your your obvious choice there is to bring in Bart. However, <laughs> he can't go up and play super high if Lionel Messi's on the pitch. He has to stay back home and just basically mark Messi. Um, which is why I think. Jay would be the guy if, if there's one guy that that has to play 90 minutes mm -hmm. or I would I would really, really be happy if he did play 90 minutes. It would be Jay or if Muyumba does come on, he has to be told you you've got to you've got to get up a little bit more and help out either Mirinchuk or whoever is coming on for Mirinchuk. So I just you can't 
transition. You can't make subs in the 60th minute or 70th minute or whatever if the game is still close. And then they bring on Messi and expect everything to be the same. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah I, fi- I finally found it. There we go. Yeah, see, that, that's it. we got to make sure that, uh, that that gets played at any appropriate moment. Absolutely. Uh, when you look around the rest of Major League Soccer, now that, uh, you know, we're going to be keeping an eye on a lot of stuff, you know, because it's it's head on a swivel. It's a match day and you are not you're in the middle of a push and a hunt and whatever words you want to use. NYC is hosting Philadelphia. Toronto is hosting Columbus at BMO. So I would probably end up taking the over in that. Orlando, and this is and this is the goofy part. You've got free you got a free game on FS1 tonight, yep. in addition to everything that's going on that we'll be keeping an eye on. Uh, Orlando is Charlotte allegedly at 815. And this is like I said, this is the website. This is this is what MLSsoccer.com is telling us. 815, so that's probably 825. Yep. Where uh, FS1 gets the super hyper mega you know, pregame show. Uh, then you start drifting. Cincinnati's on the road. Nashville is at home hosting Chicago. What other games are you going to be keeping an eye on in the Eastern Conference, knowing full well that going into tonight, you have to think about tonight and the weekend, where it is Charlotte kind of on the slow fade, where I don't think they, I don't think they've, I, I was talking about it yesterday. I don't think they've won since like August 1st. The big, like they've yeah, won they've, since August 1st. They've kind of uh, fallen off. And so Charlotte is on the slow fade, which means that Toronto is kind of drifting further and further up. And so any team that is right now where Atlanta is, and there's a lot of them, you hit, you get on a hot streak, then you could be making things difficult in Charlotte. Charlotte at 38, Toronto at 36, D.C. at 33. That's the playoff bar. Atlanta's at 31, Philadelphia 30. And literally these six teams that are not in the playoffs right now, in the Eastern Conference, the six teams that are not in, 10 through 15, separated by four points, and you're anywhere from two to six points away from D.C. So uh, how many screens are you going to have up and running tonight, by the way? Like three. <laughs> it's it's going to, between me, Sydney, and Henry, and Jackson sitting there, we'll probably have everything. It'll look like, you know, SpaceX Control Center. It, it'll, look like, it'll look like Hanson in NFL Red Zone. It's the <laughs> Octobox. <laughs> no yeah i mean i was talking about this last night with with one of the um the battered herons uh, the miami podcast and the bottom of this <laughs> eastern conference is ridiculous um i mean if i were a neutral and i had no dog in this fight at all the new york philly game would be probably really fun to watch we're at that weird point though where because atlanta is on the outside looking in barely um it's kind of hard to say like do I want this team to win or do I want it to be a draw and you know because Orlando and New York are not out of reach mm-hmm. I think if you're a basically DC fan below yeah you're just looking to try to make it to that seventh spot and that's reasonable New York and Orlando possible anything above that you're you're I mean you'd have to win pretty much win out the rest of your season um so I don't know, man. I, I like what the results I want to be. I it's really tough. It's almost like, you know, do you want it to just be a draw and, and each get a point and then you win and you just kind of start trying to stack wins? Um ultimately though, you, any game from now on, you want DC and Toronto to lose, period. And I think you just have to hope that everybody else kind of just notches you know, draws, if anything, to help bump your way up the standings uh, if you're an Atlanta fan. So, um, but if I was just watching another game, the Philadelphia game would be probably probably a good one. <laughs> the Philadelphia, I mean, look, full disclosure, look, we're all going to be watching all the other games in the Eastern Conference. I mean, there, there's no other way around it. That's just, it's literally how it is going to be. It, that it, Look, everything from this moment forward, you're going to be just absolutely breaking everything down. There's yep. going to be math. You're going to have your compass out. It, literally, it's like the the TI the TI 92. Sorry, the TI 90 
dat, you know, double I, you're going to be, yeah. Saying, you know, working all those kinds of combinations, turning it upside down. Yes, yeah. Sit there. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make words. <laughs> you know. <laughs> hey, dude, we all did it. So anybody that anybody that denies they didn't try to make words, you know, typing out eight double o eight and getting a laugh. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't think we didn't do that. Don't yeah. think don't think that we didn't remember that kind of stuff either. Doesn't uh, matter what age group you are. No, and especially for those of us who still act like we're twelve. <laughs> on a daily basis uh one more time hit me with the promo about what's going on uh, today tonight tomorrow uh now forever all that kind of stuff yeah so it'll be uh myself sydney and henry at the signia hotel next to the bins never heard of it yeah no right uh if you haven't heard of it it's the giant glass building right next to the bins a large hotel structure. Yeah, very 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 big one go to the fourth floor just walk in go up the escalators and we'll be right there we'll be doing a live show starting at 5 30 um going for about an hour so you'll have plenty of time to get inside and and uh get your seat and, and get more food and whatever else so you just come hang out with us we're talking the game and, and whatever else we happen to get into um starting a I guess I guess expanding upon what we normally do on Monday with kind of an MLS Monday. Um, we'll just call it a wrap up where we go over just some of the bigger stories from the weekend. So that'll be part of our, our normal show on Monday night. Um, and yeah, scarves and spikes dot com. And then I will say I saw it in the Twitch pitch. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole bins is open tonight. Oh, it's it is. Like a, full, it is. It's, it more is than a, 40, it's more than 42. It's like big, big. Yeah, it's big, big. So like right now you have. I mean, there's tickets, uh, 301, 40, $40, okay. um, 306, $37. Okay. Yeah. So it All is, right. it is going to be open, fully open. All right. So fully open. So I, I thought it was just going to be the, the, the stock 42. This was uh, the, I think this is the third of the three ones that they were going to do this year. Okay. So oh, full, full house. So yeah, I was mistaken. It is a full, full house tonight that is available as the, the roof will be closed. Or maybe not. We'll see what happens with uh, with the roof. But no, I think you want the I think you want the cauldron of noise to be on top of yes. messy and friends. And so I think that the roof will be closed with what's going on. Uh, get uh, you know sa- save your pipes. Get get your morning coffee going. And uh, obviously we will be seeing you. Uh, oh, what's uh, what are you picking on the menu? What, what's good on the menu that you have come across there at the Signia, by the way? Um. Well, so they obviously they change it periodically, but the one thing that they've had pretty much every time we've been there is mm-hmm. the is the steak frite. Okay. Or frites, whatever, whatever how you pronounce that. Um it's the them them steak frites. Yeah, those things. Uh yeah. steak with fries. It's but it's a genuine it's a, it's a good steak. And I will tell you if a steak sucks, I really will. And I, they're not paying me to talk about their menu. I'm just telling you, like it's it's a really good, really good steak. The fries are those little almost like shoestring fries, but they give you a good pile of them, you know. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's good. And then I'm a mojito snob slash aficionado hey. and their mojito is off the chain. Okay. And, and good old fashioned too. Well, and what you do is you get the, uh, the, the big steak to kind of neutralize the effects of said mojito and said other drinks before you wander in and, and get to work. That's right. Uh, later tonight. All right. So we will see you indoors. We'll see you. Some will see you at the Signia. Some will see you indoors. Some will see you in both places. It's always great to have you to come on on Wednesdays and break everything down from the Scarves in Spike's perspective as he sits there and continues to promote the show as he should with the hat and the coffee mug. We will see you indoors, my friend. We'll see you outdoors. Be safe. We'll see you tonight. All right. See you. Appreciate it. All right, there goes Tyler. 